Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is the Clevo D901C, a machine released in the summer of 2008 at a configurable price point of up to $5,000. This machine was not only one of the most expensive laptops ever made, but it was also the fastest. The only comparison would have been the M1730 from Dell, which featured a dual-core mobile processor, not even a candle in the wind to the desktop LGA775 CPU. Opening up the machine, we can see that there is a very basic industrial design, extremely clean and simple edges, slightly rounded, or a nice visual finish. Design is only broken up by the two side-mounted speakers and up to five configurable buttons or shortcut keys. The bezels are extremely thin and it features a two megapixel Bison webcam. The display is 17.1 inches and runs at a resolution of 1900 by 1200. The left side of the machine features a VGA, a video output port, a digital input for TV, a RJ11 and RJ45 Ethernet jack, along with an IEEE 1394 FireWire port and Express Card for expansion. On the right side of the machine we have four USB 2.0 ports, and moving to the rear we have a massive exhaust for the CPU. We have a 4-pin power input, which is very unique and pretty much exclusive to these massive, extremely expensive desktop replacements. This one uses a 220-watt adapter running at 20 volts and 11 amps. Here right of the machine we have a video import next to the two exhausts for the GPUs, and then in the center we have a DVI out. The bottom is extremely simple with only four fan intakes for the CPU, the PCH, and the two video cards. In the center we have uh, venting for the hard drive caddy which features two RAID 0 hard disks. And here's a nice look around the machine just so you can get a feel for how simple and beautiful this design is. This machine is currently configured with an Intel Xeon E5450 that is socket modded 775 to 771. It also features an NVIDIA 9800M GT graphics card, a relatively lower config uh, in the graphics department, and it could have up to two in SLI. Speaking of all those specs, the power draw at max load is around 172 to 173 degrees. That's with everything on and as maxed out as I can get it. Out of respect for this machine, I decided to play some titles you would have actually had at the time. I started with a classic Fallout 3, running at 1680 by 1050 resolution with the high default, and VSync off, the performance is quite admirable. Um, considering this probably would have been the only laptop that could have ran this game at this configured setting, it's pretty damn impressive, running at around 50 to 60 FPS at almost all times. There's some stuttering here and there, but for the time, this would have been a pretty appropriate representation of the performance, at least in this configuration. It could have been bumped up if we had the second video card, but we'll save that for a future video. Moving over to everyone's favorite game, Crisis, I knew that someone would ask, can it play Crisis? Well, as you can see, no problem. This is the GPU benchmark um, that's included with the game, and it works very, very well. As you can see, the performance is wonderful. But that doesn't matter if the temperatures aren't in check. So here we can see a sustained load test and overall uh, flesh temperature of the keyboard and reverse of the machine. Everything seems to be very well uh, in check and well within what you would expect the device to perform at for its size. Those big fans really do pay off. Here in synthetics, we look at 3D Mark Vantage with a score of just under 5,000, which again is really hindered by that single 9800 MGT. Bumping those up to the GTX or dual cards and SLI would give us the performance to almost double that score, and it would really provide an accurate representation of that $5,000 machine I've been teasing you about. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at upgrading this machine to its full $5,000 glory with a second video card and maybe some overclocking. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.